What's going on, great people? Terrell Harris here. Today I wanted to, to discuss how I went from being homophobic to open and affirming. I wanted to discuss this or share this is because of the tragic events in Orlando. So, you know, I allude to this in my post. I've posted on, about it a few times on Facebook, quite a few times on Facebook and some blogs, but I wanted to shoot a video directly speaking about my uh, for lack of better terms, transition. So, <clears throat> not to get into the extensive period and times through, through my childhood story or anything like that, but one thing I realize is that society teaches us to be homophobic because the worst thing you could be called as a, a young male is, is gay. So we do anything in our power to not be seen as gay um, everything from womanizing to proving ourselves as it relates to our human sexuality and being heterosexual. So, um, of course, you know, the church, most churches, most uh, African-American churches uh, are extremely conservative in their stance towards the LGBT community. And um, fast forward, and as I, I began to look at the text myself, as I entered upon seminary, as, you know, I would have a lot of discussions about whether or not um, gay people were born that way and some, some of you know my biblical understanding started to unravel I noticed a, a slight a slight change in terms of my stance because you know I, I knew individuals who were LGBT but I still had that idea about you know some of the things the Bible actually said um, so as you enter, enter seminary you understand the historical context of the writings you understand how much man has had its hand or he, actually men have had their hands in the writing of the text, then you begin to unravel some of uh, what you were taught in terms of reading things liter literally. But you also realize that human experience doesn't necessarily s supersede a written text. So what happened for, for me and what happened for us is, you know, my theology started to shift. It started to change. I, be I started to become more of who I already was because I already, I already had questions. So I think deep, deep down inside, I might've been liberal anyway. Um, but one of the things that happened, you know, I remember hearing one of the leaders at one of our previous churches mention something about, he insinuated he could hear somebody was gay on the radio. So he immediately had to change the channel. So at, at that point, we decided we needed a church that was gonna be more liberal in theology. So the, the interesting thing about it is Oftentimes there's no gray area. Either a church is going to be progressive or either a church is going to be extremely conservative. I hadn't come across any churches that lay in the middle. So on entering a church that was open and affirming, um, I still had a little fears. It wasn't necessarily related to, you know, worshiping with people who were LGBT. It was more along the lines of fearing, you know, what my family and friends would say. Um, although we knew people who were LGBT, we have LGBT members in our family, I still was a little bit concerned about what everybody would say. And I guess it's that same thing that was instilled in, into me as a kid in terms of, you know, the homophobia and not being a, a man. So uh, we, we get to the church. Um, you know, I, I run it past my mom because, you know, really I was concerned with what she was going to say. And, you know, she has LGBT friends. So. She was like, you know, she didn't she didn't really see anything wrong with it. So in doing that, you know, one thing I know about, you know, people and cultures, you know, from just overall experience, if you don't immerse yourself in a culture, it's easy to point your finger at them. It's easy to it's easy to throw stones. It's easy to send people to hell because you, you have no connection to a particular community. So when you get to a church that is open and affirming of LGBT individuals and leadership and ministry, um, one thing you'll notice is that it's just regular church and these are, are, are regular people. Um, we tend to separate, we tend to separate, um, LGBT in terms of, you know, I'm straight and they're gay or, or, or transgender or bisexual, but they're just regular people who have, how do I want to say this? They're regular people who, actually, let's just put it out. They're just regular people. So as it relates to, you know, what goes on in the bedroom, it doesn't really make a difference. These individuals still serve God. They love Jesus. 
And the interesting thing about it is, uh, what I found out is that they really just want to worship God as them, their full selves. It's not like they want, at least the individuals I know I've spoken with, they don't want to attend a gay church. They just want to attend church. Um, so overall, I think the experience in terms of immersing myself in that culture changed me. Like I, like I cringe and and wouldn't even dare support a church that wasn't um, open and affirming. You know, I may attend the service here and there, but it, 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 become, it became extremely difficult to understand and know what these individuals were going through as it relates to being demonized by the church. You know, I've heard stories of individuals actually committing suicide or hearing other people commit suicide while they were in the phone, all because of what the church was saying about them in the 80s or in the, the early 80s and the, the, the mid 80s. And to think that we would hold on so tight to our, our a text that we, we would demonize people so much that, you know, it puts them in a position where they actually question their lives and they question whether or not they should actually exist. So, um, you know, it, it's interesting, you know, even in these times where marriage equality has passed, we, we still see that society is pretty horrible to the LGBT community, I still witness churches who are participating in ministries that try to change gay people or make them straight, and they actually call that ministry. Um, and it's an, it's actually just insane for me. So, you know, I'll always lean on this, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Um, we're so quick to judge. And the, the, the thing about judgment is we tend to judge others because we want to point out, you know, the sin in others so we could actually hide in our sin ourselves if, if you deem, you know, things a sin. And uh, we like to go after low-hanging fruit that is visible. So um, I'm not trying to shoot this video to convince you that you have to, you know, subscribe to my beliefs, but consider. I just want you to consider something for a moment. As it relates to your doctrine, as it relates to your theology, are you so held to that theology that you would risk another person's life? That is it. Uh, my name is Terrell Harris. You can visit theopenbox.com for more messages like this. Once again, just wanted to put out there, if I hadn't been direct about this, the Open Box is a, an open and affirming community. So for the LGBT community, my LGBT brothers and sisters, we do and will accept you as you are. And for those of us who don't agree with our stance, how do I want to put this? Well, let's just end it there. Peace.